happy for his uh, victory. He gave a, quite a different victory speech um, uh, yesterday. Uh, here, here's what he said. I want to say to uh, lobbyist Pete Hoekstra. You are a disgrace. <laughs> and, and I'm glad we could hand you one more loss before you fade into total obscurity and irrelevance. <laughs> Makes me feel good. Yeah. Yeah. It does. Explain, stop for a second. Explain a little bit why this is so. I mean, what happened to him? Because I've never heard a victory speech like this. He's about to really unload. Yeah. Well, he's, and he'll explain some of that. He, he was smeared the whole time. He was called Al Qaeda's best friend in Congress. Because he's, I guess, because he's of Arab descent. No, no, no. They're saying it because of, um, and because, uh, because, and because of the NSA thing. Yeah, he's against the NSA. He's yeah. like, this, this is ridiculous. What are we doing? Right. Uh, he was, he was smeared the whole time, and it was just an ugly campaign. And and the, and he's the, not happy about yeah, it. The former congressman uh, has tried to start this uh, sort of mainstream Republican opposition to the Tea Party. Mm -hmm. He's one of the guys he's talking about here. And they just have tried to trash these guys that won in the Tea Party Revolution to get back the control to the mainstream sort right. of party. The, the, the GOP is really yep. is despicable, yep. mm -hmm. just despicable. To Brian Ellis, you owe my family and this community an apology. <laughs> For your disgusting... Despicable smear campaign. <laughs> you had the audacity to try to call me today after running a campaign that was called the nastiest in the country. I ran for office to stop people like you. So, I mean, he's pissed. And yeah. what what I like about that is it's refreshing and it's candor. You know, a lot of times you'll you'll have a campaign like that. And then they'll pretend to kiss and make up, and it just seems disingenuous at the end. He 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 certainly wasn't disingenuous. Well, we have a lot of people right now. I mean, we're kind of having the same problem right now. People, the only ones that are reaching out and saying, "Okay, let's put our differences aside, and let's start talking about policies," are not the ones who are honest on that approach. They're not looking for an honest. What they're looking for is they um, they are looking for a an opportunity to continue to smear and further their points of vengeance. And we've had several people reach out. Nobody honest. Nobody honest yet. Mm. Nobody, I'd love to, um, I can't say that. We've had one journalist, one very large journalist, who has reached out and said, and I actually kind of believe them, and so we are actually talking to them offline um, about before I go do anything with them or talk to them, I want to see how sincere they are. Although... CNN's Brian Stelter did a, a, a really good, really good job. Really good. The show was number one um, on CNN, and and that's a you know that's a hard time. You know the Sunday morning shows not easy to be number yeah, one. Not, not really only number one on CNN, but it beat uh, the even Fox, I think. Yeah, uh, and, yeah um, which and so happen. so they're going to do more of that interview this weekend with Brian um, uh, Stelter as well, and. And he was very, he was very open and honest and, um, he didn't ask any gotcha questions or anything else. He asked tough questions. Um, but it wasn't, it wasn't, let's try to smear Glenn Beck. And when you can have that kind of dialogue, then you actually have something. Mm -hmm. Um, but you it's know, the nice only thing people on this, are really intellectually honest and curious honest. Mm -hmm. and walk away at the end and say, I disagree with you, but I'm glad we had this conversation. Mm hmm. Um, and, and that's the kind of thing, you know, we always talk about how Ronald Reagan could get together with Tip O'Neill and it always bothers us now that people can say, ah, well, we're good friends because the principles that they claim they're for are so diametrically opposed. Like I could not be friends with Nancy Pelosi because the principles, her principles are diametrically opposed to, I believe my American principles. Mm -hmm. 
And um, and so I would have a hard time fighting on principles. And then like, hey, you want to come over for a cup of coffee or have some wine in your vineyard that yeah, you, you don't have any respect for? Yeah, right. There's Same no, with Harry Reid. Right. There's no principle there that we yeah. can unite on. And I even think you can you can unite with people who have opposing uh, principles if they're honest about it. Mm-hmm. It, well, that's you, why I said uh, Bernie Sanders. Well, yeah, you go. Ber- you said Bernie Sanders before. Nancy mm-hmm. Pelosi is so dishonest at the same right. time that it, it, yeah. it, it'd be right. infuriating to even have a conversation. Yeah, What's his face? You're not UFO guy, real. Dennis uh, Kucinich, yeah. is another guy like that. Mm-hmm. He's he's honest about who he yeah. is and where he stands. And I don't have a problem with that. Yeah. Just tell me where you stand, and I don't I don't have a problem with that. And he's also say- consistent. He wanted to impeach Bush. He wanted to impeach Obama. Right. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff that we're looking for. Yeah. And um, and mm-hmm. Justin Amash. Uh, I'm I'm thrilled that you won again. Now let's try to get the poison out and really head to work.